Hello everyone, so uh, today I'm going to show you how to bend two. Um, first of all, I'm going to talk about my tube bender, then about some of the, uh, uh, the principles of tube bending, as well as uh, finally at the end I'm going to show you how, how I'm going to bend the tube. I'll bend it here. So first of all, this is my tube bender. This particular tube bender is made by Pro Tools. Uh, this one is model 105 HD. Uh, there are many other companies that make tube benders. Uh, they are all somewhat similar, I mean, with very small differences. Just make sure you get a good quality tube bender. And a tube bender, when you buy it, it's going to come in three pieces, really. The first one is going to be uh, the tube bender arms themselves, which you're going to have to assemble yourself. And it's going to come with a die kit, and then with the stand. So. Uh, the die kit is about $300 US, um, the bender itself about $300 US as well, and this stand about $50, $70. So the tube bender, when you buy it, it is going to come uh, fairly bare, uh, usually it comes with, the, uh, uh, with a, a ratchet uh, handle in order for you to manually bend the tube. For that to happen, you need to actually fix the mount uh, into concrete so you need to drill the concrete and then put some studs and then fix it and uh, bending the tube with uh, with the uh, ratchet handle is quite labor intensive especially if you have to bend a lot of tube so that's why I modified this particular tube bender in order to make it easier to operate so what I did is I built a stand with some caster wheels and then I bought an air over hydraulic ram uh, this particular one, uh, you can buy it from uh, Harbor Freight or Princess Auto. And it uses shop air in order to actuate the cylinder. And then I built some mounts and I mounted onto the, uh, to the uh, hydraulic ram, uh, onto the uh, uh, tube bender itself. I also, put, I also bought a, uh, a manual winch in order for me to retract the ram once I am done bending. And then the next thing I'm going to show you here is my uh, die. So the die kit comes with two things. The first thing is the die itself. And this particular die is a 200 de 240 degree model. Obviously you cannot bend to 240 degrees. But they make them 240 degrees because if you need to bend 180 degree bend, you always need to go a little bit more than 180 degree in order for the tube to spring back and then you will get 180 degrees. It also comes with a follower block. The follower block is, uh, is used in order to keep uh, the tube from crushing or kinking when you're bending it. This particular die here has, I think it's a six, uh, six inches radius. And then finally, uh, we have the stand here that I bought with it. So now I'm going to show you some of the uh, the details of my tube bender. As you can see here, this is the stand that I built. I put some heavy duty caster wheels on it and I also built some legs. These are extendable legs. They are built out of um, threaded rod, 5.8 threaded rod. And then what I use them for is when I need to level the bender and the base onto the ground if my ground is not level and it's not going to be 100% level. The reason why I use these uh, stands here, adjustable stands, only when I need to do a double bend. That means it's, a, it's, a, it's two, bent, two bends in a single piece of tube. If I only need to do one single bend, then I don't, I don't put them on the ground, I just leave the tube bender the way it is. Next I have the die, and as you can see here, the inner uh, radius of the die all, must always be uh, clean and free of uh, a grease, so I do not put any grease on it here. However, the follower block always needs to be greased, and uh, as you can see, this follower blo block is, is quite heavy duty. There's also my hydraulic ram as you can see here and this is the winch that I was talking about it's just a strap type winch and then I built a little tray here this is a lever in order to actuate the hydraulic cylinder and this is 
uh, my little indicator dial. So this is the indicator and this is the dial itself here where you can see how many degrees you're bending. To. So this is for my tube bender right here. So the next thing I'm going to show you here is how to actually bend tube. So as you can see here, the best way that I find to bend tube is to actually draw them on the garage floor. This particular piece of tube, I want to bend it to 135 degrees and I need one leg, this part here, from here to here, I need it to be 44 inches and the other side, from here to here, I need it to be 6 inches. So I ha all I have to do is cut a 50 inch piece of tube but now I need to figure out where to actually start bending the tube. And to do that, I always have a piece of 90 degree uh, bent tube, as you can see here. But what I do is I actually notch it right here and right here. I just use my grinder to put a little mark on it. And I mark it exactly where the bend starts. And if you look very closely, you can see where it starts. It kind of starts right over here and this one starts right over here. So what I do now is I take one edge of it and make it perfectly straight and then what I do is I actually move the piece of tube until until it touches the other uh, leg of the tube so the other piece like this so now as you can see it's perfectly parallel right here on this side and then it is it is barely touching on the other side so it's right here so now I look at where my mark is on my tube and then this is where I put my white mark on the ground. So this is where I need to start bending the tube. And then I measured the distance from here to here and I found out it's two inches and three quarter. So what I do now is I come back to my piece of tube. I already cut two pieces of tube as you can see here. So I put two marks on them. So the first mark that I put is right here. So this is 44 inches from the end of the tube. So from the end of the tube to here it's 44 inches and then this distance from here to here is 2 and 3 quarter. So as you can see I already put a nice red mark right here. Nice red mark where you can see where I actually am going to bend the tube. Alright so now what I did is I actually took the piece of tube and then I put it in the bender itself. I'm going to try to make sure that I align that red mark with the inner arrow right at the edge of where the die is and then I'm going to put the strap in to hold it in place with the pin there you go, went in and then the next pin I'm going to put is this is the pin that goes in that holds the the actual uh, bender arm onto the die itself so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to go here you go, it just went in right in place and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm there's a bolt right here that is connected, it's on the uh, follower block itself and it actually rests on this particular pin here. So I, I just tighten it just a little bit and this bolt is used to hold the, the, the follower block straight so it doesn't kind of turn back. And then finally there's this bolt right here and this particular bolt just holds the tube in place. And this one I can tighten down a little bit, there you go. So. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the slack that I have in my, uh, in my bender arm here. So I'm going to extend the hydraulic cylinder as much as I can by hand. And then I'm going to take the, um, the indicator here and just put it approximately at minus 1.5 degrees. And the reason I do that is because as the hydraulic ram is going to start extending, it takes about 1.5 degrees for it to start actually bending the tube. So, now everything's ready here. This is tight. This is tight. All the pins are in place. I, uh, I screw in the relief valve for the hydraulic cran. And now I'm ready to start bending. Except, I don't know exactly which angle I'm going to have to go to yet. Remember that the angle that we saw uh, before was 135 degrees. But obviously, I cannot go to 135 degrees here. Because all I really need is the complement angle of 135 degrees, which is 45 degrees. And I always add approximately 2 degrees for spring back. So now that means the number I'm going to be looking at here is 47 degrees. So now I'm ready to start my bender. And then I'm just going to actuate the lever.
as you can see now I've reached 47 degrees without having to move my pin back to the next notch. So what I do now, if I had to move it, if I had to do a bend that is more than 47 degrees, all I have to do now is kind of release the pressure, so screw out the relief valve on the hydraulic cram, and then I can slowly winch it back in, and then as you can see this, will, uh, this pin will actually drop into the next notch, and now I can continue on. But I don't need it right now because I'm done bending, so I'm going to retract the arm all the way, get my indicator dial off. Now release the pressure on this particular bolt as well as the other bolt here. Just give it a good whack. There you go. Move this trap. There you go. So my tube is all nice bent, nicely bent, as you can see here. It's all full of grease now, all I have to do is just clean it up. Alright, so finally I bent a second piece, exactly identical to the first one that i shown you. And as you can see here, these pieces match exactly the, the outline that I put on the ground here. So that means this technique is working really nicely here. Here you go, and I had already bent two other pieces before, so my job for today is done.